I usually feel like I'm failing. I usually feel like I'm not meeting the standard, measuring up to the person I want to be, the person I feel like I should be. I feel like I fail in the big things, I, I fail in the little things. This idea of, of flourishing or living an abundant life can seem so far away and seem so out of reach. What does it look like for me to flourish? And why is it something that I should fight for? I've been reading this devotional by Eugene Peterson, and he talks about the process is your destination. He says, every step that you take is an arrival. And I think so often we get so caught up on where I need to be, and I'm not growing, I'm not thriving, being the kind of um, person that I want to be, the kind of woman, the kind of wife, the kind of mother, the kind of sister, the kind of coworker. That person seems so far, that flourishing, beautiful life. But actually each step we take is part of that process. Like Rocky Balboa says, it's one punch at a time, one step at a time, one fight at a time. And if we can take our life and put it down to what we do every day, the step and the fight, and the punch and loving your neighbor and being kind. This is actually the kind of life that we're meant to live, a flourishing life. And actually the Bible says in Psalm 92, the righteous shall flourish like a palm tree. He shall grow like a cedar in Lebanon. Those who are planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. They shall still bear fruit in old age. They shall be fresh and flourishing to declare that the Lord is upright. He is my rock and there is no unrighteousness in him. The righteous shall flourish. We're meant to live a life that is abundant and that is overflowing and a vibrant, um, full, fruitful plant. That's God's heart for us is that we would grow and that we would thrive and that, that we would live the kind of life that Jesus died on the cross and rose again for us to live. I love the picture of, of starting at the finish line and Jesus has gone before us and the Bible talks about him being the author and the finisher of our faith and, and when we're absent from the body and we die and go to heaven, that means we're present with the Lord and so as we live our life looking to that day when we're going to see Jesus face to face and we're not going to struggle with the things that we struggle with now and not fitting in your leather jacket like you once used to and all these things that can just kind of like come in on us and weigh us down a little bit when we can look and see that Jesus has has already ran the race before us and now we can live our life from this point onward with the hope and the strength and the, the vibrancy and the vitality of knowing that we're not alone. We have the hope to keep going and the joy to keep going step by step, punch by punch. Well, I just want to share a little bit about our story and honestly the reason why I wrote this book and it started in uh, 2012 when five days before Christmas, um, our second poor daughter, Lenya, had an asthma attack and um, Lenya wasn't breathing well and then she stopped breathing. And all of a sudden she went from Levi holding her, her spirit left her body and she went to heaven. And it sounds, amazing to say that because yes our worst day was Lenya's best day and she got to see Jesus face to face and she was with him we had to say God I trust you I don't understand what you're doing and I hate this and I don't know why Lenya's not here with us anymore and believing that even in the darkness um, that God was there with us but still having so many questions and so much doubt and yes trusting God with everything holding on tightly my husband and I stood there with our hands holding hers and saying God we don't understand this and we actually hate this and we believe that you give and you take away and we say we worship you but we still don't understand and we just felt like someone 
pushed us into a, a dark pit in the, the, the Christmas season when it was supposed to be a time of celebration. And it was um, looking at graveyards and it was picking a casket and it was seeing Lenya's sisters trying to live their normal life but seeing their parents a mess like I am right now. And um, how would we keep going on after this? And the, the, the thoughts that kept going through my mind were, where is she? And we've worked so hard spending our whole lives trying to make sure she was growing and make sure she was thriving, make sure she was flourishing in her life. And then to all of a sudden, um, be in a place where she just wasn't with us anymore. But my question was like, who's watching her? I just imagine heaven being just so full of people and busy and um, there's people there from thousands of years ago. Like how is she all of a sudden in heaven and um, who's taking care of her? Like these are just all of my thoughts as a mom going through my mind. don't know um, where you're at and what you've experienced in your life. When life goes the way you didn't expect it to go, um, hurting with hope, it still hurts. And it's okay to hurt, and it's okay to grieve, and it's okay to, to yell, and it's okay to question, and it's okay to doubt. One thing I'm so thankful for is that God's big enough to handle all of our questions, and He's big enough to handle all of our doubts and we can run to him because he's the one who created you. He's the one who created me and he's the one who has the remedy for us. So even when we don't understand and even when we're hurting and even when we feel like we have a weight on our chest that is unbearable to carry, unbearable to even keep moving forward, but God is there, right there with you. And that's the whole point. And I think so often we feel um, like he's so far but he's near to us in the broken heart and he's with you in the heartache and he's with you in the pain and he's not going anywhere. In Genesis, um, it talks about God designing us as, as humans and it says that when he created the woman in particular, that he designed the woman because it was not good that man should be alone. And so God has designed us no matter where we are, no matter what we've experienced, no matter the pain that we've um, endured or that we are currently enduring, that God has designed you to be a bright light. He's designed you to be a light to shine in the darkness. And that doesn't mean that the darkness goes away, but we are a light in the darkness because Jesus is that light inside of us. So many times um, I would just be weeping and also at the same time talking with people and hoping that there would be some hope in my eyes as I would talk to people and whatever is pressing in on you, around you, there's hope in it. And as you cling tightly to Jesus, as you as you cling to the one who designed you, he's gonna walk with you. He's gonna be with you in the dark. He's gonna be with you in the light. There are some plants that actually need more darkness in order to grow. Gardenias and chrysanthemums um, actually need up to 18 hours of darkness a day as they're flowering, as they're growing, which is so interesting to me that the darkness is actually important for growth. And I believe that's the same for us too, when we're going through the dark days, when we're experiencing heartache, when we're experiencing pain, that those days, those experiences, those things that we're struggling through and walking through are just as important as walking in the light because we're brought to our knees and we're brought to a place where we're telling God, I'm gonna trust you. I don't, I don't like this, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna cling tightly to you. It's possible to shine in the middle of the darkness because Jesus is the light of the world, as the Bible says. It's not about who I am or what I do or what I've done. It's about whose I am and what He's done for me. Psalm 18, 28 says, For you will light my lamp. The Lord my God will enlighten my darkness. For by you I can run against a troop. By my God I can leap over a wall. As for God, His way is perfect. The word of the Lord is proven. 
He is a shield to all who trust in Him. God intends for you to live in your full potential, the most fruitful, vibrant, and most like Jesus version of you that you were born to be, that He designed for you to be. Something that has helped me in this is the idea of a seed packet. And when you go to a, a garden store and you wanna build a garden, um, you have to plant seeds. But when you get the seed packets and you line them up like, okay, I want strawberries and basil and um, cucumbers. If you're planning out your garden, you have seed packets with um, the seeds inside of them but the picture of what it's supposed to be on the outside. And so you open it up and you see a little brown seed that looks very insignificant and ugly and doesn't seem like anything. But what's beautiful is that the seed packet shows this is what it's going to become. And for us, Jesus is the one who is leading the way before us. And the Bible says that when we um, give our lives to Christ and we say, we don't want to follow our ways anymore, we want to follow God's ways, that means we are following Jesus and giving our lives to Him. It says that God looks at us, when we when we believe that, God looks at us and sees Jesus. He, he doesn't see us and our failures and our, our faults and the struggles that we, that we face, He sees us in Christ. And I think it's hard, that tension is really hard because we know that that's who we are. We know that that's, God who, that's who God says we are. But at the same time, we're struggling with being a nice person. We're struggling with kindness to our, our, our spouse. We're struggling to get up in the morning and read the Bible like we're supposed to. And it, there's this struggle but then at, at the same time, this is who we are and who we're meant to be and who we're born to be. It feels like we're just the seed and it feels like we're in the dark. But at the same time, it's, it's the things that we're going through. It's the, the fight that we're in that's allowing the, the, all the potential and all the beauty and all the uh, who we're meant to be inside of us to start growing and to continue to grow and to flourish and, and come up through the ground and grow fruit and blooms and leaves and branches and, and creating even um, more seeds so that they fly off and plant somewhere else. And if we can fight through the hard things, if we can keep trusting God in the middle of the hardest days, in the middle of the darkness, and we can see the challenge, but at the same time embrace it, then I believe that we'll be able to see the joy in the heartache, the purpose in the pain. When Lenny went to heaven, I would never have thought that I would be able to flourish from such a dark place and from such pain and such heartache. I never would have thought that. And God wants to meet you right where you are. And in order to flourish in the dark, we have to be aware that God's with us and that we're not alone and that He's, He's there with us. And when we feel like we're failing, remember that we're in process right now and we're taking one step after the other and we're all on this journey where we're just trying to, to trust God and when we don't understand what's going on around us and when we're in the darkness and when we're experiencing the pain, that we can flourish in the dark. The process that you're in is so powerful. And there's beauty in the struggle and in realizing that you're in a dark place, but knowing that you're not alone and knowing that it's actually possible to flourish right where you are and to grow and to let God's light in you shine bright wherever you are and whatever you're in. There's purpose for you right here.